What's going on everyone? This is another Chris Chorus with your host Chris and in this episode I'm going to be teaching you guys how to code Gravity with HTML Canvas and JavaScript. As many of you may know, gravity is a natural force that causes things to fall downwards towards the Earth. If we hold a ball up in the air and let it go, gravity will take effect causing the ball to fall downwards until it hits some sort of surface beneath it. This explains how gravity works from a high level standpoint, but it's important that we also understand it from the technical side of things if we were to effectively translate this effect over to code. From a technical standpoint, the force of gravity causes objects to accelerate in a downwards direction over time. Objects can have varying velocities, but if no force such as gravity is acting upon them, the objects don't accelerate, they move at a constant speed, giving off the illusion of a linear motion. However, if we begin to increase our object's velocities over time, we are effectively creating the illusion of acceleration. And if gravity is what causes objects to accelerate downwards over time, well, we basically just created the effect of gravity. So gravity is the constant downward force applied to objects' velocities over time, but to truly make a more realistic, intriguing physics simulation, we need to take into account what happens when a falling object hits the surface beneath it which is one, the object will lose some of its energy due to friction, and two, the object's y velocity reverses, causing it to travel in the opposite direction. And with those concepts in mind, we should now be able to create a semi-realistic gravity simulation. So let's head on over to our text editors and I'll show you how to create gravity with Canvas and JavaScript. Yay! All right, welcome everybody. So in this episode, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to create gravity using HTML canvas and JavaScript. So let's start off from the very beginning. Let's go ahead and open up a terminal window. And if you're new to terminal, don't be scared with what you're about to see here. So your terminal window will probably look white. Mine is black because I added a few customizations here, but basically you can think of terminal as a representation of our finder window over here. So you'll see if I bring this on over, line it up, I am currently in my home directory by clicking on this little home icon with my name on it and it has a few folders that represent all the files associated with my computer. Basically when you open up your terminal you're going to be sent to your home directory right away as represented by this tilde. And if I list out all my files using ls you'll see that I have the exact same folders that are present within my finder directory over here. So the reason we're using terminal is it's a quicker way to do certain things with on your computer and we're going to need it to run specific commands in order to get started up with this webpack project. So I'm going to cd change directories to a directory which I like to code my projects in. So I have one for web specifically. You'll see web is over here as well. I'm going to cd into that. And I'm not going to create any new directory as of yet. I'm actually going to be cloning a repo using git clone. And this is a repo I created for starting up on any canvas project. Basically, it contains your typical index.html file, and it also contains a file for our JavaScript. Where we're actually going to be writing our canvas code. But it also contains a few optimizations, such as allowing us to write JavaScript using ES6, allowing us to write CSS using SAS, and it'll also refresh our page automatically whenever we make a change to one of our files. So I'm going to hit this clone button over here, and I'm going to copy this link and paste it within my terminal like so, and then I'm going to specify what folder I want this to go into. So I want this to go into a folder called Gravity, and I'm just going to hit Enter, and it's going to download everything into a folder called Gravity. See, if I list out the files, we now have a folder called Gravity over here. If we look in our finder, Gravity is there as well. And it just contains all the files that we need in order to get started with this Canvas project. So I'm going to go ahead inside of this by saying CD Gravity, and then I need to do one thing before we actually get started. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to open this up in Sublime Text just by grabbing my folder over here and dragging onto my Sublime Text icon. You'll see it opened up in my other window. And in order to get started with this, we need to download all of the dependencies listed within our package.json file. Basically, these are all the things that we'll need in order to make use of all those cool features I was talking about, such as automatic page refreshes and so forth. So to install these, I'm going to type npm install into the terminal or you can type yarn if you have that downloaded as well. So npm and yarn, they're just package managers. If you don't have them downloaded at the moment, do a quick Google search on how to download them and then just type in those commands directly in the terminal. You can use npm, you can use yarn. My preference is yarn because I find it to be a bit faster than npm, but which one you want to use is pretty much up to you. It's up in there. They both do the same thing. So as soon as we install all of our packages, you'll see we now have a folder for known modules. And to actually get this running up in our terminal, we're just going to type webpack. And press enter. 
and you'll see that it opens up a page for us automatically. And what do you know, it just so happens that this page has a canvas that extends the full width and height of the browser, as we learned how to do within our HTML5 Canvas course for beginners. So this is where we're going to start off. Let's delve a little deeper into the files here. You'll see within canvas.js, this is a bunch of template code that I use within pretty much every Canvas project that I, I end up coding. So this contains things that we've already gone over within HTML5 Canvas course for beginners. So you'll see we have things such as automatic browser resizing, we're tracking our mouse's positioning, we have event listeners. The only thing that's different here really are these two functions. And these are some utility functions that'll make our Canvas development that much simpler. Rather than having to do a bunch of math to find a random integer from a specific range, this function will give it to you automatically. You just have to input the minimum number and maximum number, and this will give you a random color as long as we put an array of colors through it. So some pretty helpful functions there. We have the outline for an object, which we'll be using later on. And we also have an animate loop, which will pretty much run over and over and over again until we tell it to stop. Continuing onwards, if we look within disk, we have an index.html file. Nothing you haven't seen here before. We have a canvas tag, and we also have a script, which is linking in all the code that we're writing right here. So as long as you have Webpack running in the background, we shouldn't have a problem getting started coding. So to get started coding actual gravity, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a circle in the middle of our screen, and then we're going to be adding gravitational force to it so that when it drops, it bounces back upwards and keeps on getting pulled down as long as gravity is in effect. So to create a ball in the middle of our screen, we're going to head on over to our object right here. And since this is, we're going to be calling this a ball, let's go ahead and replace our object with just that. So we're going to be creating our ball as an object. So later on, we can actually create multiple balls because we need to make sure each ball has its own individual X and Y coordinates as well as its own color and so forth. So you'll see within this draw function right here, we're actually drawing out a circle, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. We're using the arc function and we're filling it in using c.fill. So to actually create a ball, we have the outline for it, but we need to make sure that we're actually instantiating it. And to instantiate a ball, we're going to head on over to our init function and we're going to create a variable saying, bar ball is equal to a new ball. And this will go ahead and load all the values that we put into our ball function right here into our actual balls properties. So let's go ahead and say we want to give it a x coordinate of canvas dot width divided by two. Let's give it a y coordinate of canvas dot height divided by two. And this will put it in the center of the screen. And let's go ahead and give it a radius of 30 for now and a color of let's just say red. Okay, so let's go ahead and console log this out just to make sure that we have a ball actually being loaded into the variable called ball. And you'll see we do. So now we just need to make sure that we're drawing this out. So we have our init function, which is creating the ball. But to actually draw this out, we need to go inside of our animate function. And we need to make sure that we're drawing it after this clear rect right here. Otherwise, let's see what happens when we don't have a clear rect function in place. When we don't have this, I start drawing on a screen, you'll see that the canvas is never actually refreshed. It's never actually cleared each time we draw on the screen. And that kind of creates a cool effect, but it's not really what we're going for if we're trying to animate a ball that falls down due to gravity. So we need to make sure that we have this clear rect function in there. And we need to make sure that we're calling this update function on this ball that we just created. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this text that's drawing around the screen, clean up our code a little bit. And then I'm going to say ball.update. And watch what happens. You're going to see that we're getting an error saying ball is not defined. And that is because we're declaring our ball variable within this init function. We need to make sure that we're first declaring it outside of it so that we can make use of it within this animation loop right here. So to do so, we are going to declare our ball variable outside of this init function. And once we do so, you'll see our ball is now being drawn on the screen. It looks like we have some errors left over. Let's refresh manually. And there we go, we have a perfect red dot in the middle of our screen, kind of looks like the flag of Japan at the moment. So what we need to do now is we need to actually add some gravity onto this to the ball's Y velocity so that when the ball starts falling downwards, it hits the bottom and then it goes back upwards. Gravity keeps on pulling on it and the ball will never keep on traveling upwards till it goes past the screen. It'll just keep getting pulled down by gravity. So let's go ahead and change this ball's Y velocity. To change this ball's Y velocity, we're going to head to our update function right here. And we're going to say this dot y plus equal to one. And that's going to be adding a velocity of one onto our y value as long as this update function keeps getting called over and over and over again. So let's go ahead and save that. And you'll see the ball is slowly going downwards until it goes off the screen. So we don't want it to go off the screen. We want to make sure that it's reversing whenever it hits the bottom of it. So to do that, we need to add a conditional here that says if the ball's y value plus the ball's radius 
is greater than the canvas height, the height of the screen, then we want to reverse this value right here. We want to reverse the ball's velocity. So in order to reverse this, we need to make sure that we're declaring a variable. And this variable is going to be called this.dy. dy stands for velocity in physics terms. So we need to declare a property up here as well that says this.dy is equal to dy. And these variables on the right hand side over here, they're being passed through as arguments. So we need to add an argument as well. A little bit of work that goes into this. And once we have an argument here, we need to actually pass through a velocity for our y value within our instantiation function. So this is where our dy would go. Well, let's give it a dy of 2 for now. So now our ball has a velocity of 2, and we're adding that onto our ball's current y value. So as soon as the ball's y value plus its radius is greater than the canvas's height, we are going to be reversing this velocity right here, causing the ball to go upwards in the opposite direction. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll say this.dy is equal to negative this.dy. And let's see what happens. You'll see the ball hits the bottom and it starts going back upwards. But this is without gravity applied. As I mentioned within the intro, we're currently adding a constant velocity onto our ball's y value. This velocity isn't actually changing at all. We're not actually adding gravity onto it to ensure that it's accelerating and falling downwards once it hits a certain point up here. So to add gravity onto this, what we're going to do is we're going to add an else statement. And to simulate the effect of gravity, it's actually really, really simple. All we're going to say is add on to our ball's current velocity a specific value. So if we were to give it a gravity of 1, let's see what happens. All right, and just like that, we now have gravity being added onto our ball. And that's really all there is to it. We're creating acceleration with gravity by adding a specific value onto our ball's current y velocity. So to help you visualize this a little better, let's go ahead and console log out our ball's y velocity, and you'll see exactly what I mean. And I'll go ahead and do my best to try to try to describe this whole effect for you. So let's go ahead and console log this out right here. And this is what's happening. I'm going to scroll up to the top so it's not uh, continuously going on over and over again. But you'll see our ball starts off with a velocity of 3. I think uh, just some of our numbers weren't tracked right away. It starts off with 3, and it's going. It's getting faster and faster and faster. And once it reaches its peak down here, it's traveling at a rate of 16 pixels a second, which means it's really, really fast at the bottom. As soon as it hits the bottom of our screen, though, the velocity reverses, as you can see right here. And that's going to send it upwards in the opposite direction. And it's going to start it off going upwards very quickly because this is a fast velocity. It's 15 pixels per second. But once it reaches the top of its peak right here, it's going to be going very, very slowly because we keep on adding 1 onto our current y velocity. And so once it hits its peak, the direction is going to reverse and it's going to start falling downwards. And that's going to give it the illusion of gravity, basically. So that's pretty cool. We have a gravity simulation here, but um, it's not it's not true. It's not a true physics simulation. There are a few things that we can do to make this a little more realistic, including adding friction onto this. So to add friction onto this, actually, let's start off by changing this one to a variable called gravity just to better describe our code so we can understand what's really happening here. So if we're going to be changing one to gravity, let's go ahead and add a variable to the top of our code called gravity as well. And this is going to be equal to a gravity of one for the time being. And this is just for readability purposes. We want to make sure that our code is readable and easy to understand if we ever come back to this, forget what's really going on here. So we have gravity being added on our code, but now we need to actually implement friction onto this so that our ball stops bouncing all the way back up because in a real world physics simulation, the ball is going to lose energy once it hits the bottom of our screen. So let me exit out of this for now. And to add friction onto this, friction is basically, uh, it's, it's energy being transferred into the ground right here. So we need to make sure that our ball's velocity decreases each time the ball hits the ground by a specific fraction. So this fraction is going to be called friction. And basically all we're going to do is we're going to multiply our ball's current y velocity by a fraction such as 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and so forth. And the closer this number is to 1, so the ball will bounce at a higher point compared to if we were to change our friction to 0 0.2 or something. Let's see what happens when we add a friction of 0 0.5. So you'll see the ball falls down pretty quickly. It loses a lot of energy very, very quickly. But let's go ahead and give it a nice little bouncy effect with 0 0.9. You'll see it takes a little longer for the ball to actually stop bouncing near the bottom of the screen, which is pretty much the effect we want. We may even want to go higher to kind of 
make sure that our balls are bouncing for a, a good period of time. And I think, I, I think I'm going to stick with 0.99 for now because it's going to make our gravitational effect look that much cooler once we actually get to adding more and more balls to the screen. So our friction is going to be 0.99 for the time being. I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to replace it with a variable called friction. So since I'm doing that, I need to go to the top, add a new variable called friction, and set it equal to 0.99. Okay, so you'll see that our ball eventually loses velocity the more it hits the bottom of the screen. So we have the effect of gravity with one bouncing ball, but to actually make this a visually interesting canvas piece, we can take this one step further. So to take this one step further, let's go ahead and create multiple balls in the process. So to create multiple balls, we are going to be creating an array near our implementation section called ball array. And this is going to be equal to an empty array. Basically, this is going to contain all of the balls we're going to be using within our simulation. And eventually we're going to be accessing them one by one within this animate loop. And they're going, we're going to be drawing them in different directions, randomized velocities and so forth. And it's going to give us a nice randomized, really interesting feel in the process. So we're going to be creating a ball array, and now we need to actually get objects within this ball array. So to do that, within our init function, we're going to create a for loop, like so. This is going to be var i equal to zero. I'm not writing any ES6 here for now because I want to make sure this is accessible as possible. But if you want to write ES6, you totally can, thanks to Webpack running in the background. So this is going to be equal to ball array dot length. Actually, no, 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 no. This is going to be equal to, uh, let's just say 500 for now. So this just represents the amount of balls we want to draw on the screen. So we are saying we want to draw 500, but now we need to actually get some balls within this ball array. So to do that, we are going to say ball array dot push is equal to new ball. And then we need to specify the X, Y, uh, the D, Y coordinates, radius, and as well as the color. So rather than give all these the same X and Y coordinates, let's go ahead and randomize them. To randomize these coordinates, we're going to be creating a variable each time we run through this for loop. And it's going to be equal to, uh, actually, we have some helper functions up here. As I was mentioning, we can just go ahead and grab this random int from range. So our x coordinate is going to be a random integer. And let's just start off with 0 to canvas.width. So it's going to be storing that within this x variable. But now we need to actually put this within our instantiator object. So we can say x. And let's just start off with a hard-coded value of 200 for our y. Our dy will be equal to 2, radius 30. And then we'll make all these red just for the time being. And we can go ahead and get rid of this right here. And let's make sure we're also deleting this within our animate loop. So if we save this, we're not going to see anything as of yet. This is our init function. We're not actually animating anything, which is, rare, which is where pretty much everything takes place. But what we can do is we can console log out our ball array to make sure things are actually being created within this. And if we look within our console over here, you'll see we are creating. Sometimes the log's a little off due to browser sync, but just refresh the page if it is, and you'll see uh, exactly what's happening within the code here. So we're creating 500 balls, and if we dig a little deeper into this, you'll see that each ball has a randomized x coordinate. This one's 223, this one's 265. So we're effectively creating balls in random locations over here. We just need to animate them on the screen now. So to animate them, we're going to be taking our ball array. Let's go ahead and copy this. Head on over to our animate loop. And we're going to be running another for loop. So we're going to be creating another for loop like so. Say var i is equal to zero. And then we want to run through this 500 times. But if we ever want to change this number right here, and we want to run through this a different amount of times, well, we can go ahead and ensure that this is always equal to this number right here by saying ball array dot length. And since there are 500 balls within our ball array, the length gets that number and automatically tells this for loop to run 500 times. So this is running 500 times each time this animate function is being called. But now we need to animate each individual ball. So to animate each individual ball, we're going to be selecting our ball array. And then we need to access each individual one using the ball array's index. So we're going to be putting this variable right here, i, within our index. And that's going to select every single ball for us as long as this for loop is being ran. So what we can do is we can say update to the end of this. And let's watch what happens once we save this. And we're not seeing anything as of yet. And that's because we're trying to draw all of our balls before we're actually clearing our canvas. So let's go ahead and grab this right here. And we're going to make sure that we're pasting this after our clear rect function. And as soon as we do that, let's see what happens. 
All right, you're going to see a long line just bounce to the bottom of the screen. And that is because all of our balls have the same Y positioning. And since they have the same Y positioning, well, they pretty much look like one giant strip going on right here. So let's go ahead and randomize our Y positioning as well. We have this X coordinate right here. Let's go ahead and copy this line of code, paste it, and change this X to Y like so. So instead of getting a random value from zero to the canvas's width, we wanna make sure that we're getting a random value from zero to the canvas's height. So we're going to change this to height right here. And we're not seeing anything as of yet. We need to make sure that we're actually inserting this Y value into our instantiation object right here. So let's go ahead and do that. And you'll see this is looking a lot better than it was before. You can kind of make out the balls, but it's still kind of hard to because we don't actually have a stroke. They're kind of, the colors are kind of merging in together. So let's go ahead and add a stroke over here. We'll just say at the end of c.fill within our draw function, which is responsible for drawing our ball, we want to add a stroke whenever this is called. So if we save that, you'll see this is looking a lot cooler, a lot better looking, um, but we're still having a few issues here. A few of these balls are getting caught on the bottom of our page. And a few of them, well, if we want to add an X velocity onto these, well, they're going to go off the screen, which you'll see in a second. So let's go ahead and make sure that these aren't getting stuck on the bottom. The reason these are getting stuck on the bottom is because our randomization function right here is spawning our balls so that the edges are actually getting caught on the bottom of the screen. We want to make sure that we're only spawning our balls from the ball's radius to zero. And that's going to prevent them from getting caught down here like they are right now. So instead of getting a random coordinate from zero to the canvas's height, we'll get a random coordinate from zero to the canvas height minus the ball's radius. So if we're going to be using a variable here, we need to make sure that we declare a variable within our for loop. Let's go ahead and hard code it. Let's just say our radius is going to be equal to 30. We'll, we'll do the same one for now. Uh, I need to actually create a variable first called radius. And since this is going to be a hard coded value for the time being, we can actually put it outside of our for loop. Eventually we'll go, we're going to put it back in here, but let's go ahead and put it outside for now for good coding purposes. And we'll replace our 30 right here with radius as well. Let's go ahead and see if those don't get stuck anymore. And it looks like uh, it's hard to tell with all these going on. Let's go ahead and decrease the amount to 100 so we can better make out whether or not they're getting stuck. And I think we're almost good to go. Um, so that prevents them from getting spawned down there. But eventually it looks like, if you look closely, that eventually they get, they get stuck anyways as soon as they hit the bottom of the screen. So this is happening due to the this not update function, we need to make sure that this is also taking into account the ball's current y velocity. So if you say this dot y plus this dot radius plus this dot dy, like so, it's going to prevent the balls from actually getting stuck like you were seeing before. You'll see if I go ahead and remove this, save it, balls get stuck right away because um, we're not taking into account our radius and they're just getting caught on the edge past our canvas's height. But if we add this, eventually they're going to hit the bottom. It doesn't look like they're hitting the bottom right now just because they're going so fast with such a high friction. But eventually they're going to hit the bottom. You're going to see they'll be touching the very bottom of the screen right here. So that fixes that issue. But let's go ahead and make this a little more interesting. Let's go ahead and get these actually bouncing off the left and right hand edges of our screen. So in order to do this, we need to add not a Y velocity, but we need to add an X velocity onto this. So we'll go ahead and create a property called this.dx. We're going to specify that it's equal to DX. And since we're adding it right here, we need to make sure that we're also adding it within our arguments up at the top. And if we're adding a DX onto our balls, we need to make sure that within our update function that we're altering the ball's X coordinate so that has an X velocity. So that'll take care of moving the balls in whatever direction we specify when we pass through a velocity through our instantiator object. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll say, let's go ahead and create a new variable called dx. And let's set this random so it can go one or two ways. It can go to the left or it can go to the right. In order to do this, same thing. We're just going to be grabbing this helper function right here. We'll specify, give us a random value, a random range from negative two to two. And then we just need to grab this dx, put it before our dy since that's where we specified it up here. And if we save this, you'll see that our balls are now moving from the left and the right, but eventually they go off the side of the screen, which is probably, it's not something that we really want. We wanna make sure that our balls are confined to a specific space because there's no point of putting them off the screen if we can't see them. So let's go ahead and make sure that our balls bounce off the left and right hand sides of the screen. Similar to bouncing off the bottom of the screen, we're going to be adding a conditional with our update function right here. That says, 
If the ball's x coordinate plus the ball's radius is greater than the canvas's height, or not the height, but the width, then we're going to be reversing the ball's y velocity. So dx is going to be equal to negative dot dx. And we also need to take into account our ball's x velocity so it doesn't get hung up on the right hand side of the screen like it was on the bottom down here. We're also going to be saying this dot radius plus this dot dx. And let's watch what happens. All right, so we're getting the same issue that we we're getting originally down here. Uh, the balls are getting spawned on the right hand side of the screen. And in combination with our conditional here, they're getting hung up and they can't actually bounce off the right hand side. So we need to make sure that our balls aren't getting spawned over here to the point where they can get caught up. So to do that, we're going to head on over to our x coordinate and we'll say canvas.width minus our ball's radius. And this will prevent them from getting spawned past this. And just like that, you'll see they're no longer getting caught over there. We need to make sure that our balls are only being spawned from this place in time where the radius is all the way over here to where the radius might be headed, be spawned over here. Okay, so now our balls keep going past the left-hand side of the screen. Let's go ahead and prevent that as well. Within our conditional, we'll say, reverse our ball's x velocity if the ball's x value plus the ball's radius is greater than the canvas's width, but also reverse it if this dot x minus our ball's radius is less than zero. Let's go see, let's see what happens when we do that. All right, so we're looking, we're looking a lot better. And let's go ahead and add our velocity in here just to be safe. All right, but we're still getting, we're still getting spawned on the left-hand side of the screen. So to prevent getting spawned on the left-hand side of the screen, we'll head on over to our X function. And we'll say, instead of spawning anywhere from zero to canvas's height or the canvas's width minus the ball's radius, we need to make sure that we're spawning a ball anywhere from 30 to canvas's width minus the ball's radius. So if 30 is our radius, we'll go ahead and take that, replace zero with radius. Now you see we don't have any problems getting spawned on the left-hand side of the screen, um, but we, we're still getting some issues with the balls not actually bouncing and reversing their velocity. So let's see what's happening on over here. All right, so they're still getting caught because we're saying reverse the velocity. If it's less than zero, we wanna make sure that we're reversing it if it's less than or equal to zero. And excuse me, we don't need to actually subtract the y velocity from this, so we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. Make sure it's not interfering, and there we go. All right, so this is starting to look a lot more visually interesting than it was, but we can take this one step further. Let's go ahead and randomize our dy and also randomize our color. So to randomize our y velocity, we're going to be taking this line of code, pasting it, copy and paste it, and we're just going to be saying, give us a random y value of negative two to two. And now we have balls moving quickly and also more slowly. Um, but let's, let's go ahead and change the radius of these. So the radii of these so that they're actually different as well. So we're going to be taking our radius, placing it within our for loop. And same thing. We're just going to be taking this function right here and specifying the random range that we want to go to. So we'll just say 4 to 20. And hmm, I don't I think these are a little too small for my leg. Let's go ahead and do 820 for now. And since we're only creating 100, they, they, there's not, they're not taking up that much space. It's not too interesting. Let's go ahead and up this amount to 400. And you'll see that's pretty, pretty interesting looking. And once we change the color of these, we'll really get that visually pleasing effect. So to get a random color, we'll say var.color. And this is going to be equal to not this function right here, but it's going to be equal to this random color function, which we have within our utility functions instead. So we'll go ahead back down here and we'll say our color is going to be equal to a random color. And this is going to return a random color from an array. So you'll see I already have an array of colors up here. We're just going to copy this, paste it within this function, and this is going to return a random color from the colors listed out in this array for us. So if we save this, nothing just yet, we need to make sure we're actually putting this within our instantiation function like so. But once we do, now you can see we actually have a nice looking canvas piece over here. So to finish this off, let's make sure that we can eventually restart this because if we, if we go ahead and edit our friction up here, let's just go ahead and edit something like, um, something lower, let's just say five for now. You're going to see that this animation ends really quickly and that's, that may be what you want, but you may want to actually restart this animation somehow. 
So to actually restart this, let's restart it whenever we click the page. To do that, we're going to say add an event listener for whenever the user clicks. So click. And once the user clicks the page, we're going to be calling this function. Whatever code is within this function, we're going to activate. So you'll see each time we resize the page, we're calling init over again. And we're actually, um, we're actually adding more and more and more balls and or array to the point where it's actually unbearable. This is too laggy for pretty much any project. So to make sure that that's not happening first, I know we need to make sure that we're calling init whenever we click. Let's go ahead and focus on that bug with resize. I know we're going to take a little detour right here, but we need to make sure we do this before we add our click functionality. So right now we have our ball array, but uh, whenever we resize the page, we're recalling this init function, which just means we're pushing more and more balls into it nonstop. We need to make sure that we're actually restarting our ball array so that it's empty whenever we resize the screen. So to do that, it's very simple. Whenever we call init, we want to reset our ball array equal to a new array. And since we're doing this, we can just do away with this declaration code up here. If we save it, you'll see that our animation is still intact. But once we start resizing, we're not adding more and more balls on our screen, which is what we want, because otherwise we just get that laggy animation, which is not, not ideal at all. Um, so we want to make sure that this is happening whenever we click the page. So we have this init function right here, which is calling pretty much all of our initialization code that creates the balls. We'll just say whenever we click the page, reinitialize. So I'm clicking right now, and you'll see that we're reinitializing everything. And whenever our animation ends, we can just restart it, which is pretty freaking cool. All right, so I think that's going to be it for this one, folks. We learned how gravity works, how to implement friction, how to respond to collisions, and we even took things one step further by implementing the effect with many objects instead of just one. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe, and I'll be sure to produce uh, the most badass videos I can in the meantime. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Later. <laughs>